hey, man, I don't know if there's a condensed version of improvement over the off season, but just overall thoughts on what the team did from a conditioning standpoint over the off season. Yeah. Uh, before before I, I get into that, just real quick, um, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I love these players. I love Coach Pittman. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here, be a part of this program, his program, this university. And, uh, you know, every day we're, we're working to make these these guys better young men, make them better players, to win championships and make make this this fan, break, fan base and this, this state proud, uh, first and foremost. It's, it's different here. And so that's, what, that's why I came. And uh, I believe in coaching. Really, really excited about what we are building every day here. But uh, going to your question, I thought we had an outstanding summer. You know, um, really, really excited where we're at. Um, but I'm not satisfied where we're at. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're here to get better every single day. We're going to push the envelope um, with that. But we made a lot, a lot of strides. We've gotten faster. Um, you know, we got 36% of our guys that were the GPS. They can run 21 miles an hour and faster. So we got five guys that can run 22 and faster. And then 60, uh, what I got here, uh, we got 61% of our team that can run over 20 miles an hour. That was, you're, that's that's everybody. I'm talking about O-line, D-line, tight ends, and your skills. You got you got over half your team being able to run 20. So got faster. Strength numbers went up. Um, very pleased. Uh, the gains that we made. The camaraderie, the to connect togetherness that we've uh, we've accomplished, but uh, we got to turn it up a notch as as we get here in training camp. Congratulations are in order for you and your wife. Good, oh, good thank you. On that, Landon Jackson talked to us about running. I think twenty point four at Media Days in Nashville. Can you maybe speak specifically to his? I, he gained uh, forty five pounds too, so maybe yeah. we saw in him. Yeah, uh, Landon, and, and, and there's a bunch of guys, and, and we can get to that that later. But but specifically, Landon, uh, in the spring he was hitting the high 18s, low 19s, um, in, in in the off season. But he played the bowl game at 238, and he weighed in yesterday, first day of camp at 283. Uh, so he's he's held his weight, he's gotten stronger, um, and obviously, it's something to say about the kid when when you get faster and you put on 40 some pounds, right? I mean. That's 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 hard to do, but kudos to him and all our players, man. They they came in ready to work every day in the summer. They're a great group to work with. They're hungry. We're hungry as a staff and program. Uh, but he he was committed. He he worked his butt off every day. Um, took his um, nutrition and recovery um, the right way, and, and just was always looking to get better. Never never stayed satisfied, and I think that's why he continued to see. The success in the off season and uh, all the way through the summer. Coach, another guy that we've watched make some transformations with weight since he's been here. He was like three ninety when he got here. Devon Manuel, you weren't here yet, but he's kind of gone down each year. I'm curious, like, what did his weight get down to at his lowest point, and, and what is he at now, and what are the progress that he's made? So, uh, yeah, so uh, Devin Devin got down pretty low. He came in pretty high, dropped a lot of weight. Um, got down to about 282, but he weighed in. Uh, where's he at? Yesterday, Daniel Ma Devin Manuel weighed in at 309, or no, 310. Um, so he was he was um, he had some stuff going on with with his body. Um, we had to figure some things out that was kind of irritating his his, his 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 stomach wasn't resting very well too. We got that that figured out, and like I said, he he got pretty loaded about. 282, 284, and now he's back up to 310. And our goal is to keep him around that 315, 318 mark as we, you know, embark on this season. Uh, Bo squat like 700 pounds. I'm curious, any other freaks in the weight room? I know you got a few, but anybody that just like jumps off the page? To yeah. Um, well, staying, staying with the, the linemen, um, you know, from a squat standpoint, Point, I think a really good guy that probably don't get a lot of notice um, is Brooks Brooks Edmondson. Um, he squatted six fifteen, could have done more. Uh, or I'm sorry, six twenty five. Uh, Patrick Kudis, who's you know fighting for a starting job. He's he's a six hundred pound squatter. Um, you know Tank uh, Tank Booger, who came from us from, from Maryland. 
uh, got significantly stronger. He's squatting uh, like 645, 65, 655. Uh, so, and you know what? To be honest, some of those guys could have done more. You know, some of y'all just see the video of Bo. It's kind of hard to see in person. Bo could have done more. But at the end of the day, I need Bo to be the starting center. You know, it, it, it comes to a point where there's a juice work to squeeze. And I had to fight. I kind of fought him to, to do it because he hit 675 so easy. And so he's like, Coach, let me hit something. Please let me, you know. And, and Bo's a workout warrior. Um, and so grateful, grateful for that because he, he leads by example. And we need that up front and trench, guys like that. But, uh, you know, could have done more. But at the same time, you know, I, I need to play football, you know. So, uh, but guys like that, uh, Chris, Chris Paul, kid just left, made a lot of gains. I mean, he's squats in the mid 500s. You know, he's a 340, 3, 345 cleaner. You know, benching over 365, had a really good off season. He went from 215, uh, start of off season, he weighed in at 231. So you look at a guy put on 15, 16 pounds, uh, that's gonna play a lot of place for us. Um, so and he's running, he's running in the in the in the 21. So I mean, you talk about another guy that's put on weight, gained, gotten stronger and gotten faster. All you guys sitting in this room, you know how this league is, man. Like. You can't play linebacker at 215 and run 20 mile an hour and only be able to be a subpar squatter. I mean, you you got to check all the boxes. And so we're trying to push that envelope, you know, every day. And uh, but we we had several guys. Um uh, and those are those are just a uh, just a few. Rocket Sanders, another guy, I'll be honest. Rocket had more in the tank, but at the same time, I need Rocket to carry that rock for the hogs, you know, and um I, I try to use really good judgment, especially as, as the summer wraps up, because as you guys know, you get four or five days off and then they're, we're, we're practicing. So if I got a guy that's got to, you know, strain back, well, now he can't take the reps. So what does that do? That, that affects the team. So just making good judgment, but Rock, Rocket really, I mean, his power, he took his power clean to, from like 305 to 310 to like 350 in the last nine, 10 weeks. He squats mid 500s, could have done more. But once again, you know, he's, he, you get to ends, ends mean, right? Like it's, it's time to play ball. And so um, he's strong enough, um, really increased his speed. He's in the, tw he's in the um, high 20s, like 20.93. So he's on the verge of 21. Um, so we had a really good summer. That, that's just to name, name a few, you know, that, like you said, that, that stick out. Bo, um, you know, was that a goal of his all off season to get to 700? I mean, what's it like kind of uh, working with these guys and, and working on their goals that they set in the summer and then they, you know, get to the fall and they achieve them? Yeah. Well, it's, it's great because, and I, I hate reference the video, but you watch the video, notice, notice how the room is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Bo's excited, but what about the other 45, 50 guys that are right there cheering him on? You know what I mean? And just as excited as, as he was to hit it, you know, and that's where I think we've made a lot of ground is, is culture. Everybody wants to talk about culture. You know, that's our standard. You know, our culture is our standard, you know? So uh, do I think it was a goal? Yes. Do I think he had that in mind? I don't know. I know the goal for us when I sit down with Bo, when I, when I got the job is obviously he's a strong guy and he wanted to continue to get, get stronger. Um, so once we hit, I think, because last year, I think he hit around 650, 660, and then to come back, you know, and I mean, he's played a lot of plays for the Hogs, but to be able to come back doing the, the amount of volume of running that we did, because I, I ran them a lot, we ran them a lot, but to still hit that is, is very impressive. You mentioned pretty early in his, you know, pre-camp press conference about the the strides and nutrition, and you mentioned it too. What's what are some of the specific things like you've been working on with the guys when it comes to you know diet and, and making sure they're eating the right things? Well, first, I think it comes with education. You know, Miss uh, Miss Brooks, um, she's our um, head um, dietitian in football. Um, so once twice a week, we always do continued education on the back end of our training sessions to educate our guys on what and how they should be eating, how they should be recovering. So, you know, putting five to 10 minutes on the, on that every, you know, two, two times a week and you do that all off season for 16 weeks, you, you say it enough, hopefully things stick. And I think, like I said, our, our guys, they want, they want to be great. They, they want to improve. They want to get better. 
Um, so I think education would be number one. And I think number two would be us holding them accountable. Make, like we're making them go eat, you know. Um, we're having breakfast club. We're, we're making shot, making sure guys are drinking their shakes um, post, post training session. We're, we're checking in with them at night, making sure they're eating, especially if they're a weight gain or a weight loss, you know, weight loss guys. So I would say those, those two are, would be the biggest thing is the education and then the accountability behind it. Coach, you mentioned early on that I think you said 60% of the team hit at 20 miles an hour and maybe 31% hit at 21. Uh, what were, what were, uh, what were those percentages like when you first took over? Like how, how much had they increased if, if you know that? Yeah. To be honest, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I can get that, get that to, to Kyle, but I do know this. We have doubled the amount of guys that are running 21, and we only had 20. We only had one guy last year run 22. So, so we've improved. And I'm listen. I'm not. I'm not talking what they. The last staff, we inherited a, a good situation. So it's not like I, you know, came in this big bad thing. And uh, the staff before us did a really really good job. We just, you know, we do every every staff does a little things different. You know, uh, for our skill guys. We wanted to get them bigger and stronger, but obviously put an emphasis on speed, right? Speed. You know, in this league, speed kills, especially at your, at your skill position. Explosive plays, typically the team that's got the most explosive plays in a game are the most uh, successful teams that end up winning the game. So we put a big premium on that. And you said, I think, five guys that hit 22 and one last year. Who was the one last year, and who are the four that have hit that mark since then, if you could reveal that? Yeah, I – to be honest, I'm not sure who who the the, the guy was last year, um, just off the rough number. But um, you you look at AJ Green, uh, um, he hit 22. Tyrone Broden, um, Isaiah Satania, um, Andrew Armstrong, and uh, who's the fifth guy? Um, oh, Malik Chavez. So there's your five. So you're welcome. Yeah, Coach, um, at Media Days, Sam Pittman and the guys, they talked about finishing. How do you believe the work in the weight room over the offseason is going to translate to them finishing some of these tight games this season? Well, I think it, it, winning's in the details. You know, and when you play in this league, and I know I keep going back, but I've, I've been in this league twice, um, It's winning's in the details. It really is. And the more you magnify the details – and the more you put an emphasis on it now, the better the better you give yourself a chance later. That's nothing's guaranteed, right? Only two things in life guaranteed, that's death and taxes. But you know, if you don't do those things, then you then you know you don't have a chance. We got to give ourselves a chance. And putting a premium on on finishing, doing things right, attention to detail, the discipline, the accountability, um, is gonna pay off. You know, when I, I can't tell you. But I do know this, the tighter the games and the more important the games are, that's when that stuff shows up. Sam Pittman, what's it like being back, maybe not in Georgia this time in Arkansas, with Sam now as the head coach? Uh, I love coach. I, I'm forever grateful for this opportunity. You know, I, I wake up every day trying to earn earn his trust. You know, that's my number one goal. I want him to, want him to feel like, he can trust me and his staff, our staff can trust me, but it's unbelievable. You, you, you're not going to find a better man who truly cares, who's genuine, that wants the best for our players, our staff, um, good work-life balance. You know, um, nobody's going to put pr more pressure on us than, than ourselves. Our, our coaches, myself, we, we put more pressure on ourselves than anybody could. So that's not the issue, but – just the way he treats everybody and how he genuinely cares. You know, when when he offered me the job, as soon as he hung up, he FaceTimed my wife. Like that, that number one tells you, you know, what kind of person he, he is and what he stands for. Coach, I remember when uh, uh, when Bo came in, everybody was talking just how naturally strong he was as a freshman. I'm curious, and not just with strength, but maybe jumping speed, all the things. Is there a freshman like that that just kind of jumps out to you? Oh, uh, for you, you talking more like o, o line, D line, or just in general? Any, 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 or both. Yeah, whatever you want to say. Um, 
you know, we have a we we had a lot of really good good freshmen. All our DBs that came in mid year, man, I I'll tell you what they they know how to work. We just had to clean up some detailed things and some some uh, technical stuff, but they all came in ready to work. Um, trying to think of who else. Um, you know, summer summer wise, summer wise, I tell you a guy that really has done a really good job and has made a lot of strides is Quincy Quincy Rhodes. You know, he came in at, I think he was 273, 274. He weighed in yesterday for camp, 289, and he's been 288, 289 the rest of the summer. But put on weight, looks looks the part. Um, has done a really, really good job. Um, he comes to mind. Um, uh, Isaiah Augustus, um, he is going to be really, really special. Moves really, really well. Really, really strong for his for his size. Um, really, really impressed with him. Davion Dozier, um, he can run. Um, he's he. I thought he did a really, really nice job today. Showed showed some of our older guys that I mean he could potentially help us right right off the bat. Um, uh, who else? Um, Shamar Easter. Right, he's done a really, really nice job. I didn't know how how he could really run. I mean, kid ran like 21-7. I mean, dude's I mean, it's pretty good as tight end, right? I mean, because you're going to be – in this league, it's, it's going to typically be a safety or, or a backer on a tight end. So, that creates um, – that creates an advantage for us. Um, so, that's that's a few guys that kind of stick out. Um, but very, very fortunate. They, I'll, I'll say this. There's not one guy that came in where I'm like, oh, man, like we got our work. I mean, they came out where they came from, their high school coaches, their programs, whether it be their strength coach or whoever that does the program, uh, have done a really, really nice job and have really accelerated their help for us. Well, I saw some of his um, post-spring testing numbers, jumping and yeah. weights and all that stuff. What are your thoughts on on him and just his physical attributes? Man, he's he's a freak show. He's a freak show. I'm glad, I'm glad we got him and nobody else did. But, I mean, you're talking – I think he's like a 5'15 squatter, you know, at 215 pounds. Um, he He's running high, high 21s. Um, he cleaned 335, could have probably done a little bit more. Um, I think he hit uh, 350 or 355 on his bench. I mean, you're talking about a receiver now, you know. So, but I uh, – Tesla, the best thing about that kid is, is he shows up and he works like it's his last day every day. And what that does is elevates the whole room, right? elevates not only uh, his position group, but the DBs, everybody. I mean, it, it does, it does, and it sticks out. But unbelievable kid, unbelievable human being, and we're lucky to have him. Coach Sam was saying the other day that you're doing a lot of your testing in the afternoon. Um, how much had been going on early in the morning that maybe prepared them for coming out as early as they did today? Uh, well, so every Friday morning we went early. Um, and, and here's why. Number two reasons. We went in the afternoon because I wanted to be hot and I wanted to be tough, right? We got to – we this program is built on toughness. The only way to, to be tough is to do tough things. So we, we, we challenge them every day uh, in some sort of fashion, competitive stuff. But we're going to run out in the heat. Flip side is obviously we're going to play some early morning games, right? We play the, the noon game. So we're 11 here. So being able to get them up and get them to work and work together and that we're all here on time, we did that every Friday. So um, we didn't do it as much as we did in the afternoon, um, but we we did do stuff in the morning, but we did, we did that all off season. So, I mean, we still did that for 16 weeks where we were. So I guess I guess we'd have 16 sessions that we went early in the morning. What time? 6 a.m. I wanted to ask you about a couple of different players. Uh, one is Marion Harris. He's he's kind of like Manuel in that he was he's lost a lot of weight and he's trying to gain it back. Where is he in that process? He's he's back. He's back up. He dropped he dropped a little bit. And got in low 280s. Uh, he was two 293 yesterday. So he's he's back on the up. We're making it a very, very demanding for him as we check all his meals, make sure he's eating, forcing stuff down him, although I know he doesn't like it. But as 
I mean, you went in the trench, you went in the trench, O line and D line, you, you went up front, and he showed in the bowl game his ability, right? Played really, really well for us in the bowl game. And I think that gave him a lot of confidence. Now we got to take his confidence along with his performance and keep building it. One of the numbers that stood out when we looked at the roster was that Rockets up to 242 pounds. Sam was saying that it's all muscle for him. Do you see him at the same speed that he was when you came in? He's actually faster. <laughs> He's actually faster. He uh, so uh, Rocket Rocket Rocket's up to right at uh, 21 mile an hour. Um, last year he touched like 20.03, so he gained one. But that's you talk about running back, right? We we hit the hole and he gets a stretch. That's the difference between maybe a 25 or 30 yard run or a 50 yard touchdown, which goes back to explosive plays. So, um, but Rocket, man, unbelievable kid, unbelievable human being, always early, always comes to work, stays late, comes in and does extra rehab with our with our strength staff. I mean, it's like if you could model a guy that you want your son to be after, that that would be the guy. I mean, he just does everything right, class act, and uh, wish we had more of him. Talk about uh, Shamar Easter a little bit. I think Luke has is up a little bit from the spring as well. Just the tight end position as a whole, how do you feel about those guys? I really like it. I really like it. Um, I think we've done a really, really good job. Our, our coaching staff, lead by Coach Pittman, the portal guys that we have, we have not missed on any of them. And that's hard to say, right? It really is, especially nowadays. But we we have not. Every guy that we got from the portal is going to play and it's going to be significant for us and our success. Um, so, um, but a guy, you talk about going back to the tight end room, Luke Haas, uh, uh, you know, he was 221, now he's 241. So he's put on 20 pounds. You know, I'm sure most of y'all were at practice today. You can kind of see that, right, in his legs and in his upper body. He's put on weight. He's got to be that way to play in this league consistently week in, week out. He's going to be a big factor for us. Um, Gums transferred from North Texas. Uh, believe it or not, he, he, he hit 20. He hit 22. We think it was a malfunction because he's consistently hit high 21s. Not saying he couldn't, but you look at you look at that kid, he came in at two. We got him at the beginning of summer. It was 231. Got up to 243, running high 21s. That's mismatches, right? Game of football is, is, is mismatches. Um, Francis Sherman, he was with us at, at Louisville. So I know a tough kid, um, you know, blue collar, stands for everything that we want in our program. Um, strong kid. I mean, you're looking at 365 bench, squat, squats 500, um, 335 on the clean, you know. So really, really nice job with him. Then we talked about Shamar, he's one of those younger guys too. Really nice job coming in, gotten faster, gotten stronger. Um, Nathan Bax, I tell you, Nathan Bax had a really good offseason. His weight didn't change, but his body type changed. You know, he 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 lost about three or four percent body fat. So leaner mu muscle, moving better, mobility's better. Um, another guy had a really good offseason, Tyrus Washington. So we're still talking about tight ends, right? <laughs> so I'm excited about that group. I really am. They push each other. The thing I, I think I really like about that group is they complement one another. You know, as, as you guys know, in competition, whatever it is you do, business, sports, whatever it may be, you got to watch for those people behind your back trying to maybe stab you. They all want the best for each other. And so what does that do? It makes the room so much better. But Tyrus had an unbelievable spring, changed his body, gotten stronger. Added added some uh, some muscle mass, dropped some fat, especially in the midsection. So, really excited about that group. You, you mentioned a few players who have gained a significant amount of weight, but you've said they've also increased their speed. I know it probably varies by person, but what's the key to being able to do that? Effort, consistent effort. You know, and that's what we preach every day in our program is. Is everybody can be great one day? Can you can you be great every day? Can you be good every day? Because that's that's what a lot of people can't do. They can't back it up the next day and the next day and the next day. So consistent effort on their part. I think the way that we structured the training program um, so that they can handle certain loads, certain doses appropriate. 
um, to build up to hit those certain speeds. Um, I think the recovery part, which is twofold, goes back to our athletic training staff, our staff, the kids, because they have to do what we're asking them to do. Um, but honestly, uh, none of us in this room are going to run 21 or 22. Um, so I say that it, it goes back to them. It goes back to their effort, their consistent work uh, that they put in all, all, all offseason. Okay. 